Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a rather interesting product. This is the Latte Panda Alpha. It is a single board computer powered by a Core M3 processor. It's essentially the same guts as the 12-inch MacBook, but you have a lot more flexibility with this platform than you might with a MacBook. Uh, costs about $300 or so in the configuration you're going to see. It's even got 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM in dual channel configuration as well. So they really thought about a lot of the things that enthusiasts might want out of something like this. And we're going to be exploring some of the things that you can do with it in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little computer is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Now this is a device that is geared towards the maker community. It's kind of a Swiss army knife of computing. You've got the Intel processor on here, of course, but you also have an Arduino, as well as a number of ways to get data in and out of the device without additional things hanging off of it. I'll cover uh, some of that here in this video. Uh, just know that we are not a maker channel here on this channel. We're going to look at general performance here. Uh, so I will try to find some examples of people using these in more maker-oriented environments. So if you're trying to see what it can do as an Arduino board, for example, this is not going to be the video for you. I don't want to waste anyone's time here. Uh, but again, I will try to find some examples. And if you have some, uh, definitely let me know in the comments below. Now, the one we're looking at today costs $300 for the base model. That's what this one is. Uh, they do, though, have a configuration with built-in eMMC storage. And unfortunately, I didn't get that one. I probably should have. Uh, the reason is, is that I added a PCI Express slot here on the back of the uh, Latte Panda that required me to remove my internal storage to make room for it. And that made it a little difficult to get Windows running on this. So you might just want to get the version with that eMMC storage uh, that will give you the option to uh, boot right off the device itself without having to rely on another hard drive. And then, of course, you can add uh, crazy cool things like this little slot here to it later. And we'll explore some of the things you can do with that. You've got a ton of GPIO options on here, and there are a number of things that the board supports. Uh, you got PM here, I2S, I2C. You got RS-232 serial, another USB riser here. Uh, you can also plug in DC power directly to the board if you wish, but you can also use the USB Type-C connector for powering the device. So you got a lot of options on that front. Your Arduino is accessed over here on this side, and everything is very clearly labeled on both sides of the GPIO uh, pins here. You also have BIOS access here as well. So you get a ton of functionality here, especially if you are using this as part of a project. You get a very powerful processor that's very easy to interface up with other devices without having to get a whole bunch of USB dongles and all the other stuff you might need to do. So I think it's going to give people a very uh, good head start. It's even got a real-time clock here, and this is what this little battery is for over on that side. Over here, you've got three USB 3.0 ports. Those are very useful. You can boot operating systems off of that if you want to do so. On the back, we've got that USB Type-C connector I mentioned before. This is a full service connector, so it does power delivery in. It also shoots DisplayPort video out. Uh, and of course, it allows for USB data devices to be connected. I've got one of these docks on the desk that will boot up in a second, so I can plug in a single cable to get my monitor and a few extra ports added to the device. So that was pretty helpful to have that port be fully functional. We've seen some name brand laptops that don't do this with the USB-C port. Audio out over here. You've got gigabit ethernet right here. HDMI is over here. Uh, one thing though, with its built-in HDMI port, it does not appear to support 60 hertz at 4K. The best I could get out of it was 30 hertz, 30 frames per second at 4K, but it did drive a 1080p display at 60 hertz. So I think you're going to have some issues perhaps in the home theater world with this, especially if you want to watch 1080p 60 content. It did not appear, at least through the HDMI port at any rate, that you could get things running at the uh, proper frame rate there. Now in the back, you've got two M2 expansion slots, including an M key here at the bottom. Uh, this one's probably the most versatile on the device because you can hook up your NVMe storage here. You could also attach an M SATA drive if you want. You can even do something like this funky adapter that allows you to connect up desktop PCI Express boards to the Latte Panda. Isn't that cool? 
I found out about this through ETA Prime's channel, who's done a lot on this board, and we'll reference him a few more times in this video. Above it is a more limited slot. This is an E-key. Uh, this is something that you can use for Bluetooth adapters and Wi-Fi cards and whatnot. Uh, but there's already Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in here on this chip, so it would have been nice to have two M keys. I think that would have given it a little bit more flexibility, but perhaps there was some hardware limitations at work with this. So uh, the, really the most useful slot here is the lower one. There's also a few other things of note, including the ability to connect up a display via ribbon cable. Uh, there's also a panel here for adding touch capability if you want. You've also got an uh, SD card slot over here for augmenting that onboard storage if you opt for it. Uh, so there are some uh, additional expansion options here as well. And on the Wi-Fi, just one note, they give you a couple of antennas in the box, which I suggest using uh, because without those antennas attached, the signal is very, very weak going into the card. All right, let's take a look now and see how this thing performs. We've got Ubuntu 18.10 running right now, and it seems to be working just fine. I've got the proper video resolution loading up here. Uh, we've got Wi-Fi, audio, Ethernet, Bluetooth, all of that stuff seems to be working, and it feels pretty snappy too because we do have that Core M3 chip on board here, so I think you'll have a pretty good experience on open source operating systems. And if you're uh, running this thing headless, for example, with whatever you're using to power your robotics in a project, I think this will be uh, just fine and will deliver all of the performance you need. It's definitely going to be a lot faster than a Raspberry Pi might be, thanks to the fact that you've got that Core M3 chip here. So it's good that out of the box, you've got a good Linux solution here that appears to be uh, working fairly well. Uh, what's really cool is I've got all of this right now kind of running through this dock here on the desk. So this USB-C cable is powering the Latte Panda. It's delivering the operating system actually because I have an external hard drive plugged into the dock and the only thing I'm using right now beyond that USB-C cable is just the Ethernet that I've connected up, but I could probably run that through the dock here too. So having that multifunction port is really adding some flexibility. Let's take a look now and see how Windows performs on here, and then we'll do some more fun stuff. So on Windows, let's kick things off with some web browsing. We've got YouTube running at 60 frames per second, 1080p, no issues or dropped frames here, which is what I would expect out of one of these KB Lake Core M3 processors. We also had very good experiences browsing the web as well. Things are really snappy and responsive uh, as they have been on other Core M3 devices we reviewed here on the channel, uh, mostly laptops in the past, but again, it feels about the same to us. Uh, we also ran the uh, browserbench.org speedometer test, and on that one, running in Google Chrome, we got a score of 86.1. That comes in right about where I would expect this chip to come in at. And other basic tasks like word processing also performed as expected, pretty snappy and responsive, and it's a good general purpose computer. So let's shift gears over to gaming now. We're looking at the Dolphin emulator running on the Latte Panda with no external GPU, just the built-in Intel stuff, and we're seeing a uh, really nice performance here. It's running at full speed. It looks great. Uh, this is, again, just off of the uh, Intel GPU, so no fancy tricks going on here. So I was pleased to see this. Uh, this is pretty consistent, though, with other Core M3 processors from this generation. Uh, Intel's been making some pretty good progress here with this chip. And I think we also can benefit from the dual-channel RAM with this emulator as well. So we're seeing uh, really nice performance here, and I think you'll have a good time emulating stuff with this device. Uh, definitely check out ETA Prime's video because he's got more examples of how the Latte Panda can work for emulation and some things that he suggests you can do to get it tweaked for the best performance. So here is Fortnite running on the Latte Panda, again, just with the Intel hardware. Uh, this is at the lowest possible settings, so we are outputting at 1080p, but rendering, I think, at around 720p or less. So it doesn't look all that great, but the frame rate is very playable. You'll hit 60 a good portion of the time. Uh, when other players come into the area and you start having more of an intensive battle, you'll see that dip a bit. I also found some dips when I was jumping out of the bus, but overall a playable experience, although a bit ugly in the process. And we also ran Rocket League, and there we were getting frame rates between 40 and 50 frames per second at the lowest settings at 1080p. Again, that is with the internal Intel hardware here. Not bad, but again, a little ugly. But let's take a look now and see how we might improve the situation through the use of a desktop GPU, which is one of the coolest features I've seen on this thing. Let's take a look. Now this is not the most practical solution for a gaming PC, but it actually does work. So what we've got here is the Latte Panda on the bottom of the stack. We have an adapter here that I got at Amazon. They were selling these for like two for $20, so it's not all that expensive. 
I did have to hook up a power supply to give the uh, little adapter here enough power to power the card. And some cards might need additional power as well from the power supply. So that's another thing you got to stack into the mix here. And we're running with a GT1030 uh, GPU from NVIDIA. Uh, so this is kind of like a low-end card, but it seems to be working pretty nicely here. We've got uh, The Witcher 3 here running at about 30 frames per second at the lowest settings with this GPU. Uh, we would not see this performance off the Intel hardware. So this is an example of uh, just how you could really boost the power of this thing by using an external GPU with it, or in this case, kind of an internal one, I guess. Uh, so it really is delivering performance we've seen on a lot of MX150 laptops. It really is about the same. I'm noticing some lag here and there. It might just be because I had to boot Windows off of an external drive, uh, given that the uh, slot for that drive is being taken up right now by the uh, card here. But it has been a pretty good experience here playing some games with the GPU. Let's take a look at one other game. All right, here is Street Fighter V, and we're running at the lowest settings, so it doesn't look as good as it could, but we are getting a solid 60 frames per second out of this, which this game really requires. So you can definitely uh, get yourself a cheap little GPU connected here and get uh, better performance than you would out of the Intel hardware. Uh, ETA Prime on his channel actually hooked up a larger GPU. I think he connected up a GTX 1070. So if you want to see how far you can push this thing uh, with this little adapter connected here, you can check out his channel for more. But overall, I am uh, quite impressed that this even worked at all. Uh, surprisingly, this worked the second I got everything attached to it. I was just totally shocked that the smoke didn't come out and uh, I actually got video out of this thing on the first shot. Windows detected the GPU right out of the gate and it was off and running. It was really pretty cool to actually have a crazy project like this actually work. Let's take a look now at some benchmarks and see how this stacks up with other PCs we've looked at. So let's begin on the 3D Mark CloudGate test and without the GPU we got a score of 4,941. Uh, this does put it below the GPD Win 2 which is a handheld Windows gaming machine with the same processor. Uh, they tuned that one a little faster, perhaps because they had more confidence in their cooling system on it. Uh, so you can see it's just slightly below there, but definitely within the ballpark. Uh, it also performed well against another uh, Core M3 laptop we've looked at from TechLast. Now with the GPU, we got a score of 7,788. And it actually did a little better on the graphics performance than we saw on a few laptops powered by an MX150 GPU, which is pretty much the same chip. Uh, so it is doing fairly well with the particular GPU we were using. Uh, but you'll see the CPU score on this one is lower uh, than some of the laptops we've looked at, uh, primarily because this chip is a Core M3 chip and is not as fast as the i5 chips we typically see on a lot of those laptops that have that GPU. And with the GPU attached, we ran the TimeSpy benchmark, which runs in DirectX 12. Uh, and there we got a score of 1,106, which puts it pretty close to many of the MX150 laptops we've looked at uh, in the past here on the channel graphically. Uh, but again, the CPU score is a little lower just because those laptops did have faster processors than what's inside of this device. But nonetheless, very good performance. Now we also tested without the GPU how well this fan here can keep the processor cool with the 3D Mark stress test. There we got a score of 90.10%. That's a failing grade on that test. 97% is passing. So I think if you are really eager to keep this thing running at its top performance, even under load, you might need to come up with a different solution for the fan and heat sink here. Uh, you can easily remove it if you wish uh, and put in something else. I think they were trying to keep everything really compact here. And the cost of that is a little throttling when the computer is under heavy load. All right, one last thing to check out, and that is its home theater performance. We're going to start with the HEVC Jellyfish test file. This is 4K, 10-bit, 140 megabits per second, no drop frames. It seems to be working quite well, as it usually does on these KB Lake processors. And I also connected it up to my home theater receiver. Uh, the HDMI port here was able to get my TV to switch into 24p mode correctly for movies that require that. It also passed through Dolby True HD and DTS HD lossless audio to my receiver correctly, so that was good. But because this HDMI port doesn't support some of the newer 4K copyright and HDR standards, 
Uh, it will not work well with HDR movies, uh, nor will you be able to get anything beyond 30 frames per second out of the HDMI out of this. Uh, you can probably get uh, 60 frames per second via display port from the USB Type-C connector if you've got a power slash video output uh, dongle for it. So that's a possibility there. Uh, but again, I don't anticipate this working with any of the copyright standards that Netflix and some of the other folks are using now at 4K resolution. So it's not perfect as a home theater device, which is unfortunate because it would be a real slam dunk if it had better 4K support out of that HDMI. But overall, I think a pretty decent little package for playing back 1080p movies and getting some decent games and uh, emulators to run on it as well. So altogether, I'm pretty impressed with this. Again, I would like a little better performance out of the HDMI, but this is such an open book uh, for a computer here. They just want you to hack away at this thing and see what you can do with it. It's a major improvement over the last Latte Panda that we looked at about two years ago. They've really put together a pretty cool little machine here, and I'm eager to see what other folks do with these, especially uh, related to some projects that might make use of its onboard Arduino along with uh, the processing power that you have. I think it's really cool you can just pop in one of these adapters here and start plugging in desktop boards to it as well. But again, I would have liked to have seen two M keys here versus just the one. But overall, uh, they've put, the, put together a really cool computer here. And I think if you like to tinker, uh, you'll really enjoy using this. I have uh, seen some other folks actually get Mac OS to boot up on this thing. So it's not all that difficult to make a Hackintosh out of this. Again, it's got the same guts as the MacBook 12 inch. So it's not much of a stretch to get it working on here, at least for now, until the T2 chip begins locking everybody out of that. Uh, that's a new Apple security chip they've introduced. So uh, do it while you can, but it can run Mac OS as well. It's a very open-ended platform here. So check it out. You can find the link down below in the video description. Let me know if you'd like to see any follow-ups on this device. And also, again, check out ETA Prime's uh, channel because he's done a lot with this thing, and it's a great channel to get more detail on some things that we review here on this channel uh, like this device. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.